Hey guys, welcome back. This is Small Engines Questions and Answers, video number 93 for Friday, March 23rd, 2012. And today I've got both garage doors open. The weather here today is just unbelievable. I'm actually filming this a bit earlier in the week and it's 22 degrees Celsius outside, which is really unusual for this time of year in this part of Canada. Everybody's outside, you can hear the kids yelling out there. But anyways, it's really nice and we might as well enjoy it while we have it because what usually happens here is you get nice weather like this. It's really nice. You think it's summer and then it snows again. So don't want to discourage you guys with that, but hopefully the nice weather is going to hold off for a while. So I may as well get started with the Q&A today. And before I do that, I want to welcome all my new subscribers. In my first question today, YouTuber emailed me a little while ago asking me if he can reuse the cylinder on this chainsaw if the piston and the rings are scored? Well, the answer to that is yes. Hopefully your cylinder is not damaged at all or wore out or bigger than it should be. It doesn't have to be enlarged by much. Just a few thousandths of an inch can make it useless even if there's no scoring on it. But to give you an example, if you just had a bit of carbon that came off the exhaust port, got in your piston and rings and scored them up, but your cylinder is still good, the chances are you're gonna be able to reuse that cylinder. Just replace the piston and the rings and you should be okay. And here's an example of a scored piston and rings over here. As long as your cylinder doesn't look like this, there's a chance that you may be able to repair it just by sanding it. Here's an old cylinder here, it's not scratched, but let's say you had a few scratches by the exhaust port, which usually is where they're going to be. Sometimes what I've done is I've gone in with a 400 grit emery sandpaper and just sanded the scratches. Now what I'm talking about are just superficial scratches that may have been caused when the piston and the rings got scored. But again, they cannot be too deep because what's going to happen is no matter how much you sand it, it's still going to lose compression through that area. And sometimes if you sand it too deep, it's going to leave like a little crater in there and it's not going to be good either. It's only on the rare occasion that I've repaired a cylinder by using sandpaper and then I replace the piston and the rings to go with it. But it's really rare. Most of the time you got to replace the cylinder along with the piston and the rings. It's a lot cheaper than buying the whole cylinder with your piston and rings. And if it's an old chainsaw and you don't want to spend too much money, you can always buy an aftermarket piston and rings if you're able to repair the cylinder and it makes for a cheap repair. Personally, I always look at those options before I spend a lot of money for a complete cylinder kit. And most of your customers, if you're a mechanic, will appreciate if you do that as well for them. And unfortunately, if you're a mechanic, a lot of people give up on their chainsaws if you're going to repair it with a whole complete cylinder kit especially if you want to use one that's OEM quality. Now while I'm on the topic of cylinder kits for chainsaws, especially aftermarket ones, it just reminds me, I got a question the other day from a YouTuber asking me, what's a good aftermarket cylinder kit for my chainsaw? Well, I'm going to give you a specific name brand for a good aftermarket cylinder kit. It's not going to be cheap, but it's not going to be as expensive as an OEM kit and they're really good. And the brand name for those cylinder kits is called Tecomec. They're made in Italy, they're Nicosil coated, which is really important, and they're just as good as OEM quality. But let's say you can't find a Tecomec cylinder kit. When you look at a listing on eBay or on any other online store or small engine shop you go to, make sure to ask if it's Nicosil coated. If the kit is Nicosil coated, it's gonna last a lot longer. If it's not Nicosil coated, it's not going to last merely as long. So for example here, I have an aftermarket cylinder kit for a Husqvarna 61 chainsaw and this is not Nicosil coated. And if you look at the piston here, you can see that it's very dull. It's not shiny at all. This isn't going to last very long. It may last a while if you're just a homeowner and you use your saw a few times a year. But if you use it a lot, it's not going to last too long. And even if you look inside the cylinder, you can see it's a bit dull. It's not the same as an OEM quality. But again, you get what you pay for. Like this kit will be really cheap, under 100 bucks for sure. That's including the piston ring and the cylinder. Sometimes you have an old saw and it's not worth spending hundreds of dollars to repair it. So a cheap kit like this will do the job. And here's another piston here that looks pretty dull as well. 
And I have another one here that's a bit shinier. This one looks like it will last a bit longer. It was a bit more expensive, this one. I'm not sure if this one's nick is so coated because it was given to me, but apparently it did cost quite a bit more than the cheap ones over here. And here's a kit here for a Steel 026 or MS260. This one's not too bad, but it's not Nikasil coated. I bought this one and specifically it said it was not Nikasil coated. You can buy some that are Nikasil coated for the Steel 026 or the MS260. Now the parts on this kit that will be Nikasil coated, in case you're not sure about that, is the piston and inside here. And that will prevent the parts here from wearing out prematurely. So you'll get a lot more use out of it, as I mentioned earlier. And if you're a mechanic and you do a repair like this for a customer of yours, I do recommend that you tell them if you're using an aftermarket kit. Obviously, the price will be a big factor in the repair. And if your customer knows that you use an aftermarket kit and you tell them there's no guarantee with it, well, then they're not going to be upset at you if it blows up on them. Actually, a lot of companies don't guarantee their cylinder kits regardless. Even if you buy a new chainsaw sometimes, it's very limited, the warranty, when it comes to your top end blowing up. What I would recommend is if you use a cheap top end cylinder kit, is to add a bit extra oil in your gas. So if you want to put an aftermarket cylinder kit in your chainsaw, this is the brand name that I recommend the most, Tecomec. A question I got from a YouTuber the other day is he asked me if I rebuilt the engine in my scooter, which is a two cycle, is it okay if I add four cycle engine oil to the fuel just for the break in period? Does it really matter if my engine's a two cycle and I'm using four cycle oil? Well, probably not. Again, it's your choice if you do that. I'm sure it's not going to harm anything. Probably the manufacturer would recommend that you use two cycle engine oil to add in your gas for the break-in period if it's a two-cycle engine. Personally, if my engine was a two-cycle, I would add two-cycle engine oil to the fuel instead of four-cycle, but I don't see a problem with the four-cycle engine oil anyways. Again, you can share your comments under this video if you have any experience as to what you did when you rebuilt a two-cycle engine for the break-in period. In my next question, a YouTuber asked me if there's a broken fin on the flywheel of my lawnmower will that stop it from working? Well, the answer to that is no. It will not stop your lawnmower from working even if all the fins are broken. What's going to happen is your engine's going to vibrate like crazy. It's not going to cool itself properly if the fins are broken either because it needs the fins here to blow a constant flow of air to cool the engine down. So the biggest issue I can see is vibration and again this applies to any engine if some fins on your flywheel are broken it throws the balance off of the flywheel and when the engine runs it just vibrates a lot more but it will not stop it from starting. My last question today from a YouTuber is what kind of oil should I use in my pressure washer pump? Now I did a bit of research on this and the oil that kept coming up the most often is a DP70 oil which has rust inhibitors in it. If you can't get that oil, you can substitute it for an SAE30 non-detergent oil. So I wrote it down here just to show you again, DP70. If you can't get this, get an SAE30 non-detergent oil. And I believe that Briggs and Stratton makes a pressure washer pump oil which is fully synthetic. You can always get that oil if you can't get these two other oils that I showed you. And if you want to be absolutely sure, just contact the manufacturer of your pressure washer. And to clarify, the oil I was talking about is the oil that goes in the pump, not in the engine. And the oil that will usually go in the engine of your pressure washer will be an SAE30 or HD30, which has detergent in it. You can also use 5W30 or 10W30, whatever your manufacturer recommends. But these will be the most common types of oil that will be used in the engine. And before I end off today, I just want to show you this older chainsaw made by Echo. And it's an older 440 EVL. And it's a 44cc chainsaw, but it's fairly big and they were good chainsaws. So if you have one, you may want to consider repairing it as long as your compression is still good. And they're built pretty tough. They're all made of metal. Hardly any plastic on this except for this over here. And this one here just needs the switch repaired and probably a new carb kit. And by the way, these are made in Japan. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Hopefully you've had some nice weather as well, spring-like conditions like here. So again, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.